my class, uh, so I'm not sure if we're supposed to do uh, the whole part uh, of the prompt or just the last part, but um, I'm going to do the whole part just to be safe. So uh, the first part, identify one new piece of information that you learned from the textbook. I have always been a big advocate for stretching and have always stretched before doing any type of physical activity. On occasion, I will, I will just stretch uh, just to stretch even if I'm not feeling like I need to. I noticed that if I did not stretch before working out or before playing a sport, my performance was nowhere near where it should be. People would even make comments about it, um, about how much I stretch and how I hit every part of my body, even if it's something like arms day or leg workout day. Regardless if I feel uncomfortable not stretching my whole body, even if it is not the primary focus of that part of the body that day, I try and explain to people that stretching is the same thing for me as warming up slowly in sports. For example, I've been stretching and when I play basketball, baseball, slash softball, golf, football, or soccer, I always start with basic short shots, swings, or throwing and gradually work my way further and further back. Uh, I just know, I just know my body and I know I'm not the type of person that can go out and play without stretching properly and having a good workout. I do this in my physical education class uh, to explain to them the importance of stretching even at a young age. We do not have time to stretch every day, but when, I, when, but when we do, I make sure that they do the stretches right because a lot of my students and players like to rush the stretching aspect and then start shooting from the top of the 18 yard box or shooting from the three point line. I work constantly to try and get my students and players to take the same technique that I have as I know it brings greater success. With all this said, uh, that with all this said, the part that I did not know, although now it makes sense, is the section in our book titled Improving Mental Health. I always looked at stretching to succeed better in sports and working out, which is which in this case, which is the case, but never thought of it as improving my mental health. The book mentions psychological stretch, psychological stress is built up over a period and can be, and can cause muscles to contract, which can lead to tension and anxiety. It helps with taking away the negative effects of the psychological stress by helping to loosen tight muscles, slowing down breathing rate or my breathing rate, and it helps release the endorphins that then leads to the benefits improved mood while also uh, promoting relaxation. And that was by the author. Um, second part is uh, additional information about the importance, benefits, and concepts related to stretching can be found at and to provide the source of the APA format. The first one is the importance of stretching, which is the Harvard Health. Uh, I found the information from Harvard University, Harvard Health Publishing to be a good source because it highlights the importance of daily stretching for everyone, not just athletes. Stretching is key to keeping muscles flexible and healthy, and it's also, it also aids in lowering the possibility of joint pains or muscle strains. Now, the second one I found was current concept in muscle stretching for exercise and rehabilitation. Um, I found this information in the article from I found the information in the article from the International Journal of Sports Physical Therapy to be a good source because, because it cl clearly explains the causes of muscle tension and the three common types of stretching. There are two figures which provide visual support for writing information. Uh, the third one is stretching focus on flexibility the Mayo Clinic. I found the article contained on the Mayo Clinic website to be not only from a credible source but also communicates to a wide audience the benefits of increased flexibility from regular stretching. Uh, lastly, explain how you incorporate this knowledge in a per uh, personal professional manner. As a coach, I've always made sure that players who do not stretch properly get a firm warning. If it happens again, then they get reduced playing time or some type of consequence if it is a player of mine. I make sure they know the difference be between dynamic and static stretching, as well as, as well as different types of stretching, and that there is no excuse for not doing the stretching right because we do it before 
and uh, we usually do it as a cool down unless we are needed off the field immediately. If a player or if a player or in this case a student is trying to do the stretch but is not doing it correctly, does not mean that they are given what I call a strike against them. If I know uh, they know how to do it due to previous observations and they do not do it or they rush through it, then that is when the strikes come into play. What I try to have them realize is that I'm doing it for their own good to prevent injury cramps as well as to be able to perform at a high level. When I'm in the physical education classroom as a teacher, like teacher I will be sure to focus on stretching in the first couple of weeks, making sure that the students are doing it correctly, correct, correct, correctly and consistently. Uh, although I have read that stretching is not needed much for younger children in primary school, when staying in the middle and high school, they need to understand that. The, uh, understand the many different types of stretches and how the stretch should feel. It is important for me to incorporate this even if they are not going to go all out in that day's lesson or even if the activity is of late to moderate exercise. While in physical education, it will at least it will at least improve what I mentioned earlier about the positive effects it has on themselves, especially when they are sitting most of the day. I will also ask the leaders of the group, uh, new leaders uh, are assigned in, uh, in each new unit, but for this unit I will choose students that know how to properly stretch or find those leaders to lead and guide other students and hold them responsible for properly stretching when I am occupied with other students or issues that I can come upon. I will probably even have a short unit or stretching unstretching each part of the body on the days that it's extremely hot so they can learn the names of the muscles, bones, tendons, um, etc. for when there are quizzes on health day. This will be a good way to start off a school year. The expectations of stretching as well as the benefits that can come from doing proper stretching. It can also be one of the easier assessments of physical education assessments a physical education teacher can have throughout the unit while using the diagnostic formative and summative assessment due to the controlled environment and being able to both observe easier and see if they were active listening when it comes to the summative testing while also giving them many different UDL ways to show that they have learned how to stretch properly. Also technology will be easily incorporated into their Google Classroom or during the or during class for those who really need visual learning besides just myself, uh, teacher modeling.